So we're going to go over our skills we've covered with Mr. Doug. So this is Relax on a Mat. We're looking for Doug to continue to go to increasingly relaxed body postures. Right now, he's in the SIT. Here's his D-O-W-N. The reason I'm spelling this is because this is a 100% command-free exercise. The way that Doug knows he's doing the right thing is by getting treats. And it is a way for Doug to really embody this exercise, that he has to work through this 100% on his own. And isn't getting coached through this by me just giving him commands in how to work through this. He's got to figure this out 100% on his own, which again is what makes this so empowering for him and gives him emotional intelligence. So he realizes when a situation arises that may get him overly excited or stressed out, he's got the capacity to relax himself and calm himself down. And that's what this exercise is all about. So when he's in a really relaxed body posture, as you see here, um, laying down, just a little chin down on the ground, it's sending a signal to his brain that everything's A-OK, -okay, everything's fine. My body's telling me that we can relax regardless of whatever's going on. So you can work on this in easy scenarios like this and start to utilize it in more tricky situations. So I just dropped a couple treats off the mat for Mr. Doug so we can uh, continue on. Next, what we're gonna do for the little guy is do a name game exercise. Doug, take a treat, drag it up towards my face and let him know that he's done the right thing by making eye contact. Next, I'm gonna make a little trickier for him. Doug, you notice I drag it out to the side and then have him come back and make eye contact so that'll be more challenging for him. Next, I'm going to take a treat, toss it down on the ground. Doug. Excellent. And he's got to turn, make a 180 degree turn, and then come on back towards me. So that's excellent for allowing him to be distracted and still have to focus in on you. I like to then parlay that into recall. Doug, come. Good job, buddy. And with recall, uh, just continue to increase the distance and then also work on it in as many different environments as you can. So uh, start to work inside at a distance, start hiding around corners, another way to make it more challenging. Then start working outside at a closer distance and continue to increase the space. Go, sit. Good job, bud. Doug, down. Good job. Doug, stay. Free. So you'll notice there he um, he was lur lur lurching forward just a smidge and restrained himself and was able to stay uh, stay in his stay, which is great. You always kind of want to play with that threshold, giving him a challenge but not making it so challenging he can't be successful. So continuing to increase the distance and duration. So the space that you're giving him and the amount of time that you're staying back, continue to tweak that and make that more challenging for him. Doug. Doug. Space. So this is our anti-jumping exercise to make sure he's not going to jump up on us. Um, he's really not too bad about that. I wouldn't be too concerned, but always a good tool for your toolbox. The more we can add, the better. Um, learning strengthens more learning. Next. Leave it. Good. So that one's pretty self-explanatory. Um, but as soon as he gains interest in something, we should be able to tell him to leave it. So we've worked with um, food as well as some other items. So here we've got a stick, and I can either wait until he's got it in his mouth, tell him leave it, or when he's interested, tell him leave it. Both are fine, leave it. Good. So here, um, that was not 
<laughs> not perfect. And so the way to disengage, I just drop the stick and it's not as fun for him. We'll give that another shot. Leave it. Good. So on that one, you'll notice he did an excellent job. I just didn't want him to um, get as engrossed in the stick. So after he'd only been chewing on it for uh, just a second there and got interested, I told him to leave it. Continue to build up those uh, repetitions with as many various items, and that'll be beneficial for making more broad-based generalization with our leave it. Doug, touch. So with this one, we want to be able to get Doug to position himself without having to physically coerce him, and we can just have him go where he needs to go just by putting our hand there. Doug, touch. This is also the beginnings for agility training. So you notice here, good job. Um, I was going to say he hadn't gone after it. One other thing that I like to do is to wiggle my fingers, get him a little bit interested and engaged. And if he doesn't go after your hand, that's fine and dandy. Um, <clears throat> just missed out on an opportunity for a treat, that's fine. Um, and just give him another shot. I would retract my hand, so we'll try that again. Touch. Good job, buddy. And again, on this one, we will continue to <clears throat> work from further and further away so that he gets better and better. So um, we're going to get him leashed up here and um, start fresh. But that is perfect. Good job, Mr. Doug. Um, give you just a moment. We'll get you leashed up.